and welcome to Scale Car Garage. Well, I got a delightful surprise today when I went to the mailbox and one of one of you wonderful viewers sent me a package. So I thought that the least I could do is, and by the way, I have really don't know what's in here, um, but I would really like to share the unboxing with you because um, uh, I'm really a little overwhelmed. Uh, I think it's wonderful. I want to say thank you. I also want to see what's in the box. So um, an unboxing here on Scale Car Garage. Very lovely, uh, lovely package. Um, let's just uh, open it up, shall we? Uh, oh yeah, excuse me, I need my glasses. Okay, glasses, and we will need a sharp implement. So let's just uh, let's open this up. I honestly don't know what is in here. I did get an email expecting a package, and it is from Peter. Peter, I want to say thank you very, very much um, for sending this, my goodness. So, let's take a look. And see if I can open this up. Here we go. I think I can put the knife down now. Oh, you see there is a note. So allow me to put the box down while I read the note. Again, I have no idea what is it. My goodness gracious, look at this. This is unreal. I'm going to read this to you. Hi, John. I thought I would give you a bit of a rundown on what I have included in the box. First, let me run you through some background. I like to turn 132nd scale model kits into slot cars, and I used to use the PC S32 chassis because it was relatively cheap, easy to get, and would work on 99%, maybe 100%, of the models available. The one thing I didn't like about the PC S32 chassis was that there was no easy way to adjust the front axle ride height. Okay. The simplest option was modifying the body mounting tube length, which wasn't always the best way. Fast forward to about, wow, I just had to look up how long I've had my 3D printer, and it's actually two years now. Two years ago, and upon my receipt of my 3D printer, I started to think about designing a new front end that would incorporate some of the improvements seen on other RTR slot cars. So I made the better chassis front ends that have pre-existing holes for using M2 set screws to adjust the front axle height. There are four different designations that vary in two dimensions, axle to guide post length, short and long, and front track, narrow and wide. You will find one short narrow BC front and one long wide BC front. The slide into the rear sections, see below. Oh, they, the, I guess they, they slide into the rear section, see below, excuse me, and are usually very tight, straight off the printer. So you can sand the sides until you get a good snug fit, but not so tight that you can't get them apart. There is a provision to drill a hole once you have your wheelbase set and secure with an M3 screw and nut. The nut should fit down into the dado running along the length of the front section on top. This is really neat. The next thing I wanted was to design a PCS32 compatible chassis rear section, but with sidewinder motor configuration. Oh man, you will find two of those rear sections in the box. And here is the explanation of the assembly of the front section. I won't take you through. Oh my gosh, and the rear section. How to get the motor in the rear section. There's final, so these are 
assembly instructions for the pieces in the box, which we got to look at. My goodness. Okay, well. Oh, wait a minute. There's, there's more. Wait, there's more. There's more. The next bag contains three motor mounts for varying use in converting either front or inline slot cars to rear or rear sidewinder configuration. One is for inline and the other two are for sidewinder configuration. I have done a couple of conversions of fly cars from front engine to sidewinder that have always just cut a hole and then hot glued the motor into the hole. These designs are rel relatively new, so I haven't had a chance to use all of them in slot cars. I have used some of the inline mounts to change Skelectric 4GTs from inline slim can to inline S can. Those scaly slim can motors are just too hot for these cars, even at 10 volts. Wow. Okay. Uh, in the last bag, because I see you have a decorated track, contains a 130 second scale oil fuel drum for your layout. There are two lids, one open and one closed, so you can have the drum as an open head <laughs> turn it into a garbage drum. Just needs some sanding and painting. The plastic used in 3D printing is very much like regular model plastic, but it is not ABS, it is PLA. It sands, paints, and glues very much like ABS. Well, what can I say except thank you so very, very much. Let's take a look at these parts. All right, okay. Oh, Peter. So Peter, these uh, 3D printed parts look amazing. Okay, so let's take out the parts here. I, oopsies, here we go. I'm, I'm so excited here. Oh, <laughs> pardon me, Peter, I thank you. So oh my gosh, 3D printed guides. 3D printed guides. Amazing. Here are, I think these are the rear pods. The sidewinder pods. Oh my gosh, and they're the front and rear here. All 3D printed. Well, first of all, I have to say again, Thank you so much, Peter. And and I know you you have a um, a website, and I'm going to put the URL for for Peter's website uh, in in the description below because uh, he he makes lighting kits that are amazing, and I would really recommend that you check out his site. And if you want to light a slot car, Peter's kits are 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 wonderful. Um, but um, what I also like to ask you, uh, please put in the comments. We have, my goodness gracious. Well, there's there's two. Three, four, five. Oh my gosh. Well, there's at least six potential slot cars we can make here. And oh my goodness, look at this. And here's the oil drum he was talking about. Oh, that's gonna have a place of honor on the track. Absolutely, absolutely. So, folks, I know I've got quite the stash of kits. <laughs> there are even more, believe it or not, that aren't visible. If you have an idea of two or three cars that you would like me to try and convert from model kit to slot car, or, um, slot car to slot car, but model kit to slot car would be great. Most likely I probably have the kit, so, um, or I can get it, but um, it could be something like, uh, oh, I know, it could be a, a, uh, a street car, like a 58, or oh, sorry, 59 Cadillac, uh, a 63 T-Bird, uh, a 55 Chevy, th th those, are, are in order. Uh, what else have I got up here? Oh my gosh, I've got, uh, oh, gee whiz. Oh, got some old kits too. Um, oh, I'm trying to think here. I'm, I'm all excited. It could be, uh, oh, a 
could be a hot rod. There you go, monogram hot rod, uh, an Aurora hot rod like Ramrod. I've got one of those that we could perhaps move into. Uh, and again, on streetcars, it could be a Lincoln Mark II, uh, a 56 Ford. You can even turn those into stock cars if you like. Um, oh, how about um, the Airfix um, P68? Um, anyway, I, I leave it to you to try and suggest what, what we could uh, make come to life with these absolutely fabulous parts. Peter, thank you so much for the package. Um, folks, thank you so much for watching, for commenting and subscribing, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing what your suggestions are for these parts. So uh, ah, I look forward to, uh, to making something go on the track with these. Um, again, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little excited. So thank you so much for, uh, for being with me for this wonderful unboxing here on Scale Car Garage. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe.